Hey guys, welcome back to How to Cook Like a Beer Gin Show. And you may be looking for someone, another chef called Chef Rhea, but she's not here. I am here. The first one we're gonna start out with today is a nice oyster coconut infused soup. And we're gonna be finished topping that off with some good cumin purity croutons. It's time to cook. These are the oysters. These are the oysters as well. So basically, they're already chucked, shucked, sorry, and they're already smoked. They no salt, and they're soaked in oil, but we got rid of most of it. You're gonna see a little bit there. Um, then we're gonna be finishing off with the Caribbean Dreams coconut milk. I'm just gonna point to that cause it's close to you. And then at the end, we're also gonna finish off a little bit of anchor butter. This one, unsalted, but we use the salted one as well. And butter is gonna be used twice because we're gonna put butter into the croutons with the purity bread. And we just use a nice white sliced bread, dice it up. I love to have the ends on. Gives a little bit of con contrast and two different textures when you do the croutons. Spices from my mindful market. Use cumin, curry, and then a blend of the house spice, which should be Cajun, garlic, paprika, seasoned salt, bar barbecue seasoning. And then basically our chopped herbs and vegetables is what we're gonna have going into the soup at different points. And then we're gonna finish off with some diced tomato, mixed greens and that kind of, well, micro greens and that kind of stuff. From here, we go to the pot. You got a nice Bertolli extra virgin olive oil. Decent amount. With a good product, you can use a decent amount. Good. And what I like to do is any of the vegetables, we like to add half for the flavor, majority flavor, and then the other half when you're simmering coming down for more texture. We're gonna get some herbs going in. Stem and everything, all washed. Marjoram and thyme. Good old bay leaf. You're gonna add celery. As I said, half of it. Garlic, the garlic we're adding now is all the garlic we're gonna use into the soup. No fresh thyme yet, no fresh herbs. Some carrot, half of the carrot as well. And we mixed our onions for color, for texture, and for different kind of taste. Using both of them, but majority of the white. We start off there, and then our spices. I like to have a fairly strong curry taste going on. And our oysters going in at this point as well. Everything goes in. I gotta ring, ring the bowl. Make sure everything comes out. You got a little stirring going on. All right. So I know this isn't traditional, but still, these products are available here in Barbados. If you want to make a different change to what you normally do, just check out Bumblebee Oysters. As I said, already prepped, flavored, smoke flavored, low sodium, so you can add the amount of salt you want in the time and at the time that you want as well. All right, so while that is getting ready, we're gonna start to work on our croutons. We're gonna add the flavor, we're gonna add the butter, and then once the soup is going to a certain point, then we're gonna toast them in our saute pan. So I'm gonna take a little break, be back, sure to make the croutons, and then continue with our soup. Keep you and your family safe with Sol Gas. Here are some helpful tips to keep you and your family safe when cooking with Sol Gas. Never tamper with the cylinder and only use the Sol approved regulator and a hose designed for use with LPG. Securely connect the regulator to the cylinder valve until it clicks into place and is properly fastened and secured. It is important to check the hose clips and the rubber hose to ensure they are in good working condition and properly secured. It is important to check your hose and regulator and change them as needed. Change your rubber hose every two years. Change your regulator every five years. If there are signs of damage to your regulator, contact an approved Sol Gas distributor or a Sol service station for replacement immediately. Safety first with Sol Gas.
All right, so we're back. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fully flavor this soup. And then while it's simmering, we're gonna continue with the croutons. So at this point, we're gonna add sweet chili. Sweet chili goes back really well with the curry. Makes it a little more subtle. It has a little bit of sweet, has a little bit of um, acidity. You're gonna add Bajan seasoning. That brings you right back to Barbados, so don't you fear. We've got thyme, we've got marjoram, we've got Bajan seasoning. A little bit of salt. Right, we can always adjust that later. Get our coconut milk in. And if we need any water a bit later, we shall add it. We are already looking good. I wish y'all could smell that. Get it? Let me know if you get it. I know I'm getting it for sure. All right, saute your pan on. Soup on. Keep that low to medium. A little bit of water, not too much. For the crouton, simple, simple process. All we're gonna do, you know what, me, I use this spoon. We're gonna add the butter to the pan. Allow this to start melting. Turn it up a little. And we're going to add cumin, a little bit of curry as well. And we're going to put our purity sliced bread with the, with the sides and all, <laughs> the ends, into the pan. All right. Good toss up in the spatula. Turn up a little. So as the butter melts, the curry toast and the cumin toast, it goes straight into the bread. And you can see the color we're getting already. That's what we're looking for. As I said, with good products, you get good results. Wonderful anchor butter, wonderful purity bread, wonderful mindful market spices. Can't go wrong. That's how we're doing it. I was going to toss it away anyway. Things happen. Right, so we're just going to load out and do it stink. Put them on the flatter side so that it toasts while everything is going on. Check, get a little check on the soup. Let me bring it over so you guys can get a little look as well. So you see where we're going with it? Nice body, nothing too heavy, nothing too light. You can see those wonderful oysters. You can see the bay leaf peeping out, the herbs peeping out. That is what we're looking for. So what I'll do now, get a little taste, see if we need to adjust the seasonings. And then we're gonna continue with the cooking. But I believe the flavor is coming along good already. Actually, you know what, you, you taste it. Tell me how it tastes. I, I liking it. I am liking it. All right, so I can be back in a minute, quick break, and then right back in to finish off these two wonderful dishes to combine them together. So it's finishing time. As I mentioned before, half of the vegetables going at the beginning, the second half goes in close to the end to complete. All right, so we're gonna have that little bite, good texture, and then we're gonna be ready to serve. So that simmering down nicely, thing we added everything else, tomato goes on top, herbs go on top. Only thing we need to do now Add a bit of butter straight to the soup. I think one should be good because we've got the fat from the coconut. We've already got butter in the croutons. So we don't want to overdo. Switch over, let me show you guys. That's how the croutons are coming along. So you see, you balance your heat though. 
Don't let it get too high. Don't get it, let it, let it get too low. And you can hear a nice crunch going on already. I don't think you can hear it. Let me get a little closer. Right, so with the croutons, you're gonna get a little crunch there. Hear that? Right, that's what we want to have, but not too crunchy. I like a crouton with a crust on the outside, but a little bit of softness on the inside. And as I mentioned before, with the products we're using from Purity, from Caribbean Dreams, and then from, from marketing these croutons, can't complain, cannot complain. And then as I mentioned too, the soup, the oysters from Bumblebee. Just can't lose with this dish. So, everything is about finish. And we're gonna start to play it up. It's as simple as that. It's time to play it up. Flavorful soup. Nothing too heavy. Gonna go well with the croutons. So let's play it up. Let me take my time cause it's hot. You wanna be as tidy as possible. Take my time. All right, the soup, just, just tell me. Croutons, actually, yeah. I'm gonna put the croutons in a way that everybody can be seen. Oh dear, I feel happy doing this though. Good. Tomatoes right in the center. If some fall, that's no problem. Everybody can get eat. <laughs> oh dear. Get with some fresh herbs as well. And then finish off with some nice local microgreens. I hear doing this and I hear smiling to myself, you know. I won't want to smile into you know. Shall I touch it? I wouldn't touch it. But nevertheless, this is Bumblebee Oyster Soup. Finish off with a little bit of spices. We, and then we brought it all together in Mossify Anchor Butter, Caribbean Dreams Coconut Milk. And then we did a beautiful purity cumin infused crouton. So that is the dish for this session. And I can see y'all in a little bit. guys so we are back for the second dish of this episode tradition not a lot of twists going on today normally I would drink a twist but right now we're going to work on ham farmer's choice picnic ham we're going to get this into the oven just bake it straight bake nothing added no glaze or anything like that then I'm going to debone put the bone to boil and then cut up some chunks from the ham and get our jug jug finished. So just get your netting off. This is ready, man. <laughs> He's tripping everywhere. He's tired of being in the package. All of that kind of stuff. So as I said, we're not adding anything. Big time for picnic ham is an hour and a half to two. Short time in. Take the other layer off. Make fun of that too, just slide your scissors through there, cut it off. And then you can rough up the um, netting. Cause you need him, we want the ham. Ham is the man. So from this point, we're going into the oven. And when we come out of the oven and we the bone in, that's when you join me again.
All right, so we'll be back. Ham should be ready. I can go down and grab it. Um, but fully baked, turn off the oven, let cool, let everything settle in. So, I'm gonna walk down there, grab the ham, and then we're gonna get into the jug. Oh dear. This is what makes so many people happy. Good old farmer's choice ham. So we simply gonna take this out. We're gonna debone it and then we're gonna use what we need. But while this is sitting, we're gonna start everything in the pot. So we need the drippings. I start with the drippings from the ham and then we're gonna add the peas, all of the ingredients. And then basically the bone is gonna go in there and boil. We're gonna dice up some of the ham and then finish off in the, in the corn flour and all that similar, allow, allow that to cook. So we got our heat going. All the dripping goes in. I can't wring out anything. This is a solid stainless steel pan. Good. Onion. Well, not a fair amount though. Want a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. Just leave, leave a little bit, just in case. A little bit of celery. This time. Everything stays in, we don't put anything at the second half. Carrot. Good. Garlic. You know garlic and pork. Happy family. Need to have them together. Pigeon peas. And these are Eve pigeon peas. Treating us good. Farmer's Choice Ham, Eve Pigeon Peas. This, this is my seasoning though. Simple as that. Turn the heat up, heat up a little more. I think Jug Jug is one of these dishes that a lot of people love. The older generation for sure, the younger ones not as much. The younger ones prefer stuffing. But I prefer, I, I actually appreciate doing it because it's part of history, part of the Christmas culture, celebration and as I said, the older generation like it. So to see them come to enjoy it makes me happy. All the vegetables are in. We've got some thyme marjoram chopped. We're gonna use half. This is what we're gonna use half and then half though for this dish. Turn it on a little. We've got this all salt, salt gas pushing the heat through well, man. And then we all set up with the wonderful blue flame stove. Just a good package all around. Good. I know what time it is now. Time to cut up this ham. We're we going simple. We just want to get it off the bone. You know what? Let me get the fat off first, the skin. A lot of the people love this part too, huh? They really do. Alright, so let me be a little more tidy. Yeah, I've got things in my pocket. Thanks all guys for the wonderful apron all the farmer's choice in the jug jug none on the floor we don't want to drop this ham at all move the fork a bit anytime you're cutting make sure to know your utensils on the board you can bounce and ricochet your knife can bounce off of that anything like that can happen we don't want that all right Good. i want you guys to see we're just going down then we angle, we just slide along the bone, go to the edge, good. And the ham is where we want it because we're gonna finish the boiling and then we're gonna get some other parts of it for another dish, another time. You know what we do with ham? Do our ham, rest it in the fridge, take out piece, make some soup, make some cutters, all of the good things you do with Farmer's Choice Ham. Well, let me get another angle here now. I try to be careful and don't make any mistakes. Let me cut up this ham for you guys. Good. And we leave some on the bone because 
you want it to boil into the jug. All right, so you're taking it off in chunks. No fancy thing right now. And that is enough to keep on. You're gonna put that into the pot and it has fit into the pot. Add some hot water. And then we're gonna just get the other parts put up that we don't need and we're gonna dice up, continue with our jug. At Mindful Market, we recognize that everyone's health journey is unique and embraces all facets of life, food, supplements, beauty, and household. With all this in mind, we carefully curate our products based on ingredient quality, sustainability, and fair trade practices to bring you only the best from international and local sources. Delicious and nutritious, mindful meals are available from our grab-and-go area and from the cafe. Made fresh daily by our kitchen to suit your diet, whether you're vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, keto, or just want some clean, wholesome food. Mindful Market. Nourish your body and soul. All right, so as you know, what pot don't boil. So we went, we did other stuff. I chopped up some of the ham. I can show you how to chop this piece. We Let's let the boiling happen. The bone in here, we're taking it out now to get the rest of the ham off of it. And then we can um, put the jug together. So you see how that's looking? That one of the Eve pigeon peas trying to run away. No, not today. Back in there for you. And then when we get this in, we can adjust the flavors and everything. But right now, we cut some ham. That's what we want. So, we cook the ham, it would say about 80% true. Because we wanted to bloom and finish up in here. We didn't need it falling apart. Just in case you were wondering, right? So that's how we cut it. In slices, chunks, and then we dice it up. At this point now, we're gonna get all the ham inside. The more ham, the better. Remember that. Don't skimp on the ham. This is a farmer's choice ham and Eve pigeon pea jug jug. So they gotta go together, but we know ham is king in this dish. Now you guys see how filled, how farmer's choicey and how Evey we looking. What are we talking about? That's it. That is it. We ain't skimping. We ain't skimping. And you notice, I ain't use as much fat. No skin. So, healthier as well. You know, some people say, but how? We have more protein, less fat. Automatically, it's healthier. So we're gonna add some of the house spice. Black pepper. Always blowing around. And pepper sauce. Can't do anything without Bajan seasoning and the pepper sauce. And I like Jug Jug spicy. The first time having it when I was younger, it was spicy. So, preferred it that way, and I continue with it that way. All right, so we can get this two minutes to boil up, and then we can add our guinea corn, bring it together, then it'll be time to eat. flower time. You're going to lower down, you put it in, stir it in. When it is all, what we call emulsified together, is when you can turn up a little bit, but not too much. We basically want it to come together nice and smooth. What I do is a little 
stir in the middle, you know how to break it down, and then as it comes together, I press it to the side, similar to Kuku. You know, everybody would have their style. Mine is a simple one, where you just work it together. To eliminate the spilling and everything, we take our time. But there's some times where you would see um, like it coming together here, and then you're going to push it and the liquid is in one section. So you take your time and bring it together. It's looking good. I can even do this off the stove. You know what? You tell me if. Just nod your head if you want me to come a little closer. All right. Coming a little closer. Take a look. See? And everywhere you look, you can see ham. And that's what we want. Got to let this finish steam on this on the stove, and then it's eating time. Yeah, you finish. Once you see this, be ready. Everything comes together. The liquid and the dry has combined. It's one family, one jug jug party, and it's time to play it up. We can taste too. We want it to look pretty first. All right, let's take your time. They see a ham all the way through. That's what we want. That is what we want. Right there, look. Mm-hmm. A little more. Just a little more. All right. That is what we are looking for. We got there. Hit it with some fresh herbs. So you can remember it. Then fine make a green a little purple and stuff and we are all done that is farmer's choice ham jug jug infused with the e pigeon peas some of those um, wonderful spices and that's it it's time to eat now so that is for you guys to look at. I can grab a little taste. I can take my time. And I want to shout out mommy. I know you love Jug Jug. Or I can do yours separately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. We ain't need no more. So on to the next time. I want y'all guys to keep cooking the beige anyway. I can be here doing it. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time on how to cook like a beige. Hi, I'm Ryan Adamson, the Poetic Mixologist. And today I'm going to present to you my memoirs, an expression of self in liquid form. Let's start with rum soap raisins, found hidden in the back of the cupboard. Raisins and mixed field ground for great cake. Fresh brewed coffee in the morning. Bay leaf and cinnamon tea converted into a syrup. Very sweet. Guinness decarbonated for its rich, bold flavors. and dried sorrel infused with herbs and spices, predominantly clove and bay leaf star anise. And of course, Mount Gare Rum, the black barrel, chosen for its spicy characteristics. Ice. And dilute the cocktail. And a nice shake. Of course, we want to add some fresh ice to our glass. Constantly agitating to get a nice form as well. To this, we add 
some macerated wild hibiscus flowers. And bay leaf leaves for aromatics and presentation. Then we will finish off with a torch cinnamon stick. present to you my memoir, an expression of self. <laughs>